Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeu. And on today's edition, we're going to be talking about Mesut Ozil. And there is a reason behind this, and I'm going to come into that in a minute. Um, but we're going to be touching on Mesut Ozil and we're going to be touching on uh, the reports that Arsenal, in fact, have more money than we initially thought. Is it true? Is it just a report? Remember, this is the same press that reported we didn't have any money. And now they're saying that actually we've got a lot more than we initially thought. So should we be taking this news with a pinch of salt? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. But we'll come on to that in just a few moments. Now, those of you who know me will know that very recently uh, I've had a change of career. I've gone from a banking career, a career that served me very, very well, it gave me a platform to, to build on, uh, you know, to do all the things I wanted to do in my personal life, uh, get a place of my own, etc., etc. And it was a career that I was very grateful for. However, now I've made the change and I'm very fortunate to be in the position where I'm able to do what I love on a full time basis. And, you know, it takes a lot of hard work to get to that point, as lots of you will know. And, and it, you know, it's been a tough couple of years I've been sort of working a day job um, working at weekends as a, a musician a DJ etc and doing this and you know in the hope that one day it will lead to the position that I'm in now so I am very thankful for that um, but the reason I'm, I'm telling you this and the reason I'm saying this now is because to be honest I'm sick and tired of receiving you know bullshit comments on uh, social media from people telling me that um, I'm a wannabe football writer. I'm a wannabe football broadcaster. The fact is I'm doing it for a living now. So where does the wannabe part come into it? That's what I don't get. Um, and this is not aimed at everyone. There are lots of you who watch and listen to this podcast on a regular basis and who have shown me incredible support. And even if you disagree with my views on particular topics, we debate them respectfully. That's what it's all about. As for those of you who, uh, you know, who can't hold a debate, who can't have a discussion with someone without turning to abuse and turning to personal attacks, you got sad lives, mate. And and it's you know it's sad to see people in 2019 in that sort of state. But anyway, we move on. And uh, the reason uh, Messer Özil is on your screen is because. I want to discuss Mesut Ozil today. I'm a bit sick of talking about transfers because in the last few days we've been sort of uh, regurgitating the same news in a way. Uh, not many major developments. We've heard a bit about the Zaha thing. Uh, you know, we heard about the, the initial bid. We heard about the fact that Arsenal made that bid over a period of time. We've then heard that Arsenal now have more money than we initially thought. So I figured today, rather than talk about players that we might get, uh, let's talk about a player that we do have, and that is Mesut Ozil. Now, uh, I had the pleasure of being on the sports bar on TalkSport last night with Andy Goldstein and Mickey Gray. Big thanks to the guys at TalkSport uh, for inviting me down again. Um, really enjoyed doing that. Really love uh, taking part on that show. It's a fantastic show. Uh, probably the best evening football show um, on national radio. Actually, it is. Um, so, you know, it, it's a real pleasure to be a part of that. And... We were talking about Arsenal, we were talking about transfers and the subject, of course, of who's to blame for Arsenal's current predicament came up and I was asked whether I believe that Mesut Ozil is to blame. And I don't think Mesut Ozil is to blame. And I'm going to explain my reasons why. I'm going to put the link uh, to the Talk Sport show in the description below as well because, uh, you know, some people have, have put some tweets out uh, on a quote I said, where I said that I would probably build the team around Mesut Ozil. Um, but, you know, it's easy for people to jump on a comment without understanding the context of it. I'm not retracting the comment in any way, shape or form, because I meant what I said. But it would be interesting and probably beneficial to those of you who want to comment on it to hear the full conversation and understand uh, what exactly was discussed. Now, for me, Mesut Ozil has underperformed in an Arsenal shirt. There is absolutely no question about that. Even his staunchest fans cannot deny that. And I am a Mesut Ozil fan. I think when he was brought to the club, uh, the deal you know, was surrounded by a lot of excitement, and rightly so. He was a top, top player. 
coming to the Arsenal for a huge transfer fee. And it felt like after years in the wilderness where Arsenal were forced to sell their better players, they finally got the checkbook out, splashed out and brought in a top, top quality player. I thought the start of his Arsenal career was pretty good. Um, and I think that what we can say is, and I know Unai Emery's only been here for one season, but I think you can safely say that Mesut Ozil probably preferred to play under Arsene Wenger because I think he was awarded more freedom. I think Ozil was one of the focal points of the team under Arsene Wenger. And now under Unai Emery, he's not. He's not a focal point of the team. In fact, he's been left out so many times this season that I've lost count. But I guess my point on Mesut Ozil is whether you agree or disagree with the contract he was handed last year, he now has that contract. He will be getting those wages on a weekly basis. And we're in a sense stuck with Mesut Ozil. So if I was a manager coming into Arsenal Football Club and, you know, I know that resources are limited. I know that I'm not able to go and splash hundreds and hundreds of millions to get the players I want. I would be looking at how I can maximise, you know, the potential of my better players. And there's no question about it. Mesut Ozil is one of Arsenal's better players. Now, would I swap him for Kevin De Bruyne? Of course I would. Would I swap him for David Silva? Probably, yeah. Would I swap him for someone like um, Eden Hazard? Yeah, of course I would. He's not the best playmaker in the world anymore. I think we can all agree on that. And I'm not under any illusions. I know that. But what I will say is that Mesut Ozil is a better playmaker than the likes of Henrik Mkhitaryan, than the likes of Alex Iwobi. The alternatives that Arsenal Football Club currently have. So what do you do with a problem like Mesut Ozil? In my opinion, you have to set up the team in a way that benefits him. Because Mesut Ozil, on top form, is far more effective than probably anybody else that we have at the football club. So you need to find a way of, of getting the maximum out of him. The problem with Arsenal last season, or one of the problems, there, there are a whole number of problems, was that at times we were lacking creativity. Now, I know we scored more goals than Spurs and Chelsea, and I brought that stat up a couple of days ago. But such a huge percentage of our goals came from two players. And that's not really been the way with Arsenal, has it, in recent years? You know, we've seen goals from, you know, Sanchez when we had him. Ozil would chip in with a few. Ramsey would chip in with a few. Uh, Giroud would get a few. And, and, you know, we had a more wider spread of where our goals were coming from. Last season, that wasn't the case. And I genuinely believe that that was down to at times, a real lack of creativity. And I feel that Ozil being left out of the team and being brought back in and then left out again and then being given the captaincy and all the mixed messages that were being sent regarding Mesut Ozil last season have been unsettling and unhelpful to the player. Is that an excuse? Am I giving him a free ride? Absolutely not. He has to improve. But we're talking about now a summer where Arsenal you know, may or may not have a limited transfer budget. We haven't seen anything yet to suggest that we don't have a limited transfer budget. So I'm going to go with that for my argument at this moment in time. I'm going to say that we can't go and spend large amounts of money on on players because, you know, as I said, we haven't seen any proof yet that that's not the case. So you've got to get try and get the maximum out of him. And when I said I'd build the team around him, what I meant by that was I'd look at a system that enhances Mesut Ozil, that gets the maximum out of Mesut Ozil. Because in the past, we had Ozil, we had Sanchez, but we didn't really have a lethal striker in Olivier Giroud. Now the roles have reversed. We've got the two strikers, but we probably don't have that supporting cast. And that's where I feel Mesut Ozil's role is so, so important. I'll say it again. Is he better than Kevin De Bruyne? Is he better than the likes of David Silva? Absolutely fucking not. No way. But he's better than anything else Arsenal have got. So until Arsenal go out there and get somebody who's going to create, who's going to make us tick, who's going to pick the ball up uh, and and pop up in different pockets and, uh, you know, confuse defenders, etc., etc., then we have to try and maximise the outputs of Mesut Ozil. I think that's really important. And I just wanted to have that discussion today and emphasise that point because I've taken a load of stick for saying that last night. But... 
Again, I don't retract that statement. I absolutely 100% believe that Mesut Ozil has a lot more to offer. I think his performances have declined under Unai Emery. Not because Unai Emery doesn't like him and he's a nasty person. Just because maybe there's a clash of ideologies. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. But we're stuck with this guy. He is here to stay. He's not going anywhere. Nobody else is going to pay him what he's getting at the Arsenal. He will be here until his contract expires. So get used to it. And let's try and think of ways and find ways in which we can support Mesut Ozil. And hopefully the manager will find a way of getting the most out of him. And then we can really benefit as a club. At the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We all want Arsenal to improve. Now, I want to turn your attention to the work of a fantastic journalist. He goes by the name of Charles Watts. He's currently working for Goal.com. I've had opportunities to speak to Charles on various radio shows. He's fantastic at what he does. And he's brought an exclusive interview to the table with Dick Law, uh, who was, of course, in charge of uh, Arsenal's transfers, or in terms of the negotiation part, anyway, uh, and used to work alongside Ivan Gazidis and Wenger and he's spoken about the Mesut Ozil deal and he's kind of lifted the lid on what actually went on there and seeing as we're talking about Mesut Ozil I thought it would be uh, a good time to point you in the direction of this interview again I'm going to leave the link in the description for you to read it yourself uh, but Dick Law said it was an incredible deal to be part of but the story of Ozil is actually called the story of Gareth Bale now you're probably wondering what on earth uh, he means and of course that was the summer, wasn't it, that Gareth Bale left Spurs to join Real Madrid. And uh, Dick Law had this to say. Real Madrid, for all of their firepower, really stretched themselves when they bought Bale. They paid an extraordinary amount of money for him and they gave him an extraordinary contract. What that meant was they needed to sell somebody. So it's the Bale story that, of course, leads us to Ozil. We got signals from Madrid that they had players for sale. So I flew out to meet with Jose Angel Sanchez, the general manager of Madrid. And he said that the club would consider selling Karim Benzema or Angel Di Maria. And he gave me a number. So I called Ivan and Arsene. We were all very cautious and sceptical. But the one thing we knew based on that meeting was they had to sell someone. Now, Gazidis was in Turkey at the time because Arsenal were playing Fenerbahce in the Champions League. But apparently he immediately left the hotel to fly to Madrid uh, to join Law and continue the talks with Real Madrid. And it was the following morning that Ozil's name was brought up. Dick Law says, We sat down with Jose Angel, who said that Ancelotti didn't want to sell either of Benzema or Di Maria, but he would sell Ozil. Long story short, Arsene was interested as we needed that type of player in midfield, but we didn't know where Ozil stood. We asked to speak to him, but Madrid said they wanted to first. I don't think that was a happy phone call for Ozil. We then spoke to him and his father and business advisor flew over to London where we met with them. Talks progressed well over the following few days and with just 48 hours left of the window, the deal was ready to be done. Um... Reading further on here, it's a fantastic article. You've got to read it. Um, you know, it really tells you the ins and outs of how that happened. But so, you know, Arsenal went there with the intention of talking to Madrid about potentially signing Karen Benzema or Angel Di Maria, and we ended up with Messi Ozil. I'm not going to read any further on. I'll let you guys read it. I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, but you get the gist of it from from what I have read to you. So I'm going to leave the link in the description. Check it out. And a big thanks to Charles Watts for providing that fantastic interview. Some great insight. And just finally, um, I know I've touched on it already on today's podcast, but just going to reiterate the fact that there are now reports going around suggesting that Arsenal have a lot more money than we initially thought. I want to know what you guys think about that. Let me know in the comments section uh, because I'm really interested to see how people feel about like this. Yes, Arsenal have been linked with a whole host of players this summer. And that, in one way, I guess, suggests that, you know, we maybe do have that money available. But on the other hand, have we made bids for some of these players? I don't really know, to be honest. Um, you know, we were we were told that we made a bid for those two Sampdoria lads. Nothing's, you know, been spoken about ever since then. And I'm believe Anderson is on his way to Leon, if I'm not mistaken. So it shows you how credible that report was. I mean, what do I think about it? I, I like I said earlier on, I'm going to 
take this stance of the budget is limited because I've not yet seen anything to suggest otherwise. And that's that's purely what I'm basing it on. If Arsenal do go out and spend uh, vast amounts of money on players, great, I'll be over the moon. Um, but, you know, this report started coming out yesterday when people were talking about uh, Arsenal having the ability to stretch up to £70 million for Wilfred Zaha. I hope we don't spend £70 million on Wilfred Zaha because if we, we have that sort of money available, there are far more pressing issues. But let me know what you guys think about everything discussed today, the Mesut Ozil thing, the way he came to Arsenal, um, and of course, the transfer budget. What do you make of it? How are you reading this? at this current moment uh, let me know of course don't forget to hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you're watching on youtube if you're listening via the audio leave us a comment and uh, thank you once again for your continued support we've had over forty-eight thousand plays in the last 28 days for the podcast so brilliant uh, brilliant statistics thank you so much to every single one of you who's listened and to those of course who have taken part shared it whatever uh you know it is of course much much appreciated we'll be back tomorrow unless there is any breaking transfer news later on so until then take care bye bye